what's up, everybody? Steve Schwartz here from LSAT Unplugged, joining you today to share why you will never run out of LSAT prep tests. At LSAT Unplugged, we offer live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. So the reason I'm making this video is that I often hear from students telling me they're worried because they're running out of practice tests, they're not going to have enough fresh new material to take under timed conditions, so they're not going to be able to get a, real, get a realistic sense of where they stand in the lead up to their scheduled LSAT test date. My first question for them is, do they even know how many LSAT exams are currently available? There are currently, at the time of this recording, 93 numbered LSAT prep tests. There are also a handful more that are unnumbered. For example, there are the super prep exams A, B, C, and C2. There is the February 1997 LSAT. There are also, there's also the June 2007 LSAT. I actually have a big list of them linked below this video in case you want to find out more about where to get some of these out of print little known exams. Law Hub only has exams numbered 19 and up. For some random reason, they haven't yet added LSAT exam number 21 into Law Hub. Not sure why. Hopefully they'll get to it one day, but you can get that one in a print book or a PDF if you have access to the PDFs. LSAT prep test A also is not in Law Hub. I don't know why, but you can get it in Super Prep or one of the PDFs out there. So know that there are more LSAT exams available to you than just the ones you're, you're going to find inside LSAC's Prep Plus, aka Law Hub. Now, of course, there are a lot of exams available to you in Law Hub. If you've already done all of them, kudos to you. That's awesome. I admire your dedication and your commitment. That's a lot of work, and you should be proud of yourself for that. And then, of course, that work raises the worry. Will I have anything else left to do? Are those out-of-print older exams even relevant anymore? Are they going to give me an accurate indication of where I currently stand? And my question then to you would be, is your primary goal the correct one? Is it really worth worrying about simply getting an accurate indication or representation of where you stand on that scaled score out of 180? Is that the main thing that you should even be worrying about right now? Or should you be thinking about the fact that out of any of these exams you've already done, if you were to redo them, would you get a perfect 180? Or would you still be missing questions even if you've seen them before? Obviously, if you've done it, if you've scored yourself, if you've reviewed already, your score upon a retake is going to be inflated because you will remember some of the questions. You will remember the correct answer. You'll remember how to set up a logic game, for example, or the topic of a reading comp passage. Of course, your score will be inflated. But if you're not getting a perfect 180, there is still something to be learned from redoing and reviewing this exam again. You may also not be solving the questions as efficiently as you could be. And so that is something worth talking through with a coach or a tutor or a study buddy. And if you would like my support, click the link below this video to book a call with me and my team. We'd love to help you out. I'd personally be happy to talk you through different ways we could support you in terms of helping you get some LSAT coaching to talk through and diagnose your weak areas, help you learn how to review LSAT questions better. So the point here really is to make sure that you're getting the most value out of the questions you've already completed, not necessarily to take exam after exam after exam to obsessively measure yourself. That's not the goal because your goal is not simply to, to get the highest practice test scores possible that are accurate representations of where you are. The goal really here is to learn as much as possible, to deepen your pattern recognition abilities so that when you take the actual exam, it will be a smoother, easier experience because you will already recognize everything that you're seeing in front of you. And because you've seen it before, you'll be able to solve the questions more quickly under timed conditions on test day when it truly matters. So of course, you can go out there and get the rare out of print older exams. They're available to you. A lot of them are on Amazon from third-party sellers. A lot of them are available in PDFs as well. But before going back to the oldest exams, which yes, of course, are a little bit less relevant, I would encourage you to make sure that you are thoroughly proficient in the newest, most recent exams that you've taken and that you're able to get perfect 180s on them. If you're not getting perfect scores 
or if you're not solving the questions as efficiently as you could be, I'd encourage you consider changing your approach, consider deepening your review process, consider maximizing your ability to recognize the patterns in these LSAT questions. And again, if you'd like my help, my team's help, feel free to reach out. We'd be happy to help you out. Again, we have live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. And as always, if you found this video helpful, please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. It really does help, and I really do appreciate it. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.